It's the Cardiff City uh, Bank Holiday Special, um, and uh, it, it, you know, the, remember the old Bank Holiday Specials? You know, it was kind of, kind of like that today. We managed to win, um, and a bit of you know, a bit of a kind of a and, and the Bank Holidays years ago, they used to be clowns and whatever. And today we had two own goals, so you know, it's all it's, it's all all good news. Amazing, amazing results. CCFC winning two one away at uh, CCFC. After that dreadful, dreadful, dreadful Sunderland game. <laughs> uh, on the panel tonight, we got uh, Simon Willis, we got Steve Wiggins, and we got Dave Sugarman. So thanks, thanks all for coming in. Um, Steve, if I can come to you first, because I, I just like you to you, you were telling me that ordinarily there'd be other people in your house to watch Carter City, but there was a, a decision not to join you today. Tell us all about that. Yeah, normally um, uh, away games, if, if I'm not going to the away games, I get a house full of the, of the lads over and um, they all message and call me this morning uh, and I quote, Wiggs, we're not coming over today, um, we can't take any more, we're off to see the county, so <laughs> they went over to Newport to watch them today. So they got I was, battered 4-0. Uh, eh? They got battered 4-0, I think, didn't they? Did they? Oh, I haven't yeah, seen that any yeah. scores. Yeah, yeah, so uh, I was on my jacks here today, Steve, but it were uh, pleasantly surprised. Um, and like I just said to you, I, I and, and to the guys, I, I can't work out how a team can go from that poor on Good Friday to pulling up a display today, which was full of fight and guts, which was, and that's all as a fan we want to see, boys, isn't it? You know? So, Steve, was that, just to ask you before I go, go to the others, I didn't see any of it. And, um, it's one of those things with Radio Wales. I, I tried to listen to City today, and they kept on playing with some Swansea match. You know, I mean, I'm thinking, well, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't live in West Wales, and you know, if I was a Swansea fan, I wouldn't want to listen to Cardiff and and, and vice versa. But it's, it's like it was it was some sort of issue. They kept on they kept on they kept on losing it. But we went one nil down. I thought, oh, here we go. As soon as we go one down, it's it's over. It's over, isn't it? You know, and I couldn't believe yeah. we equalised. Um, was it because we managed to get that goal back? Do you think that was what really lifted us to give us a bit of self self belief well to be honest they, they, we started okay today and um and they got their goal which was which was a, a really well worked goal um we weren't again we weren't pressing again i'm going to mention that because i don't think bullet enjoys pressing but they scored a really well worked goal um from the front. i think after that goal we just um we just seemed to step up a gear and the, the 15, 20 minutes after they scored, we um, we were really on the front foot. And OK, they still had a couple of half chances, but, you know, uh, and it was a bit of, a bit of a fortuitous goal. But saying that, I think Bowler would have scored anyway, uh, if you watch it on the highlights tonight. But it, it was um, it was a real it was a real decent display today of um, a fight, you know, people putting tackles in, which we didn't see on Good Friday and which we didn't see at Swansea. And um uh, to be honest, I mean, Cal and Grant Mr. Sitter threw one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. We we could have won by more in the end. And, OK, we were backs against the wall. I didn't agree with his decision to uh, to pull Turnbull off and, and stick Wintle as a 10 because he's tried that before and that hasn't worked. And I I felt as if he was pulling the shutters down a little bit there. But then he brought Ramsey and O'Dowder on the last five, ten minutes. But, you know, we ground out three points. At, that's a place there where we, where we we haven't won for about 14 years, I think. So, yeah, yeah, well, you know, two so two on goals people, doesn't do any harm, does it? No, no, exactly. And you know, people say that I don't, uh, I, I don't give enough credit when we win. I, I do, and and hats off to to Bullet today because when I saw the starting lineup with uh, with none of the kids involved, uh, I, I was a bit dismayed to be honest, like probably the other guys were. But you know, we we got three points, and um, you know, the playoffs are back <laughs> back on. <laughs> come on now, come no, on, they're not. Know. Calm, calm down, son. Calm down. Uh, <laughs> um, I'm going to come to Dave in a bit because I'm sure Dave's got plenty to say about recent City performances. Um, but I'll go to Simon first because Simon's joining us tonight from Cardiff City World. And thanks, thanks Simon, for coming on, particularly on a bank holiday. Now, I'm just going to say to you, Simon, yeah, I don't, I, sometimes I do, I pop in for bits of it. But the other night, I watched your um, stream after the Sunderland game. Uh, it was quite colourful, should we? Should yeah. we say? And um, say. fairly, 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 fairly outspoken. Um, you know, what's your thoughts on going from from that to this? Um, so interesting. One of the things I talked about after that game, and I did again last night in the kind of preview for this game, is I've been frustrated by the lack of sort of structure within the side. Like we all know, Wintle and Rawls can't play together. Um, 
and there's certain other sort of little things which you know are not going to work. Uh, Steve mentioned the winter playing in the 10 didn't work at earlier in the season. And I felt like that was a big issue with Wintel and Rawls on um, Friday. I thought that was a big reason of why we were so poor. Yes, you know, we lacked fight and, and the rest of it. But just structurally, we were just all over the place as a team. And today, yeah, I was frustrated by the by the lineup and, and certain people still being retaining their places and, and whatnot and not having the youth in there. But overall, I thought the, st- the structure of the side, it was like round pegs in round holes for the about, well, for 10 of the positions. So I think straight away, you're going to get a better performance because everyone, everyone's a bit more balanced. And I thought that was a big part of it. I thought we need Rawls or Turnbull to be one of the two deeper midfielders. And he obviously did that with Rawls. Rawls and Syopis seem to play quite well together. Um, as I've said a few times, I, would, I don't, don't understand the refusal to play Turnbull alongside Syopis. That's where he's had his best games for Celtic. But he, just, he hasn't played there once yet as the deeper midfielder Turnbull. And I thought, in particular today, I thought Syopis, Turnbull and Phillips all were absolutely excellent. Um, you know, there was a few other performances which were decent. Josh Bowler plays like one good game in five, and I thought today was probably his one. And then you know that the next couple are going to be very um, inconsistent. I thought we looked much more solid a left back today defensively, but obviously Collins doesn't give you quite as much going forward. But then away from home, you don't necessarily need like a marauding fullback who's going to overlap and the rest of it. You need to be defensively solid. Um, away from home, we've been pretty solid all season um, for whatever reason. I think his tactics suit it. Um, just quickly, I wanted to say about something else which Steve said about the his refusal to press. I don't know what's happened with the press in a card. At the start of the season, we played all the possession football that we play now. We've played it all season. But at the start of the season, out of possession, we pressed. And when we, the whole point of having the possession and playing out from the back was to try and play through teams. And then there was movement off the ball with the wingers, the number 10, whoever, and it worked. And then as the season's gone on and we had that little dip before Christmas, everything's become quite slow in possession. The movement off the ball has been non-existent. And I think you could see against Swansea, like we let them play. We just let them walk out of defence there was obviously a tactical thing because otherwise the manager or one of the coaches is going to say, press, like, no, press. He could do it at any point in the game. They could change that. So it's obviously a tactical decision to not press, which I think long-term is a worry in the championship because teams like, I don't know, Leicester, Southampton, you know, all these different teams, they will walk through you if you don't press them. Um, and the games where we have pressed well at the start of the season, Huddersfield away, uh, Sunderland away, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the others, Leeds away in the first game of the season, Ipswich, like we we have pressed and been successful, but certainly since Christmas, the press has been non-existent and that's something which I think needs to be addressed. I'm, I should be more positive because it was a good, good performance today, but I know that the next game will play with a similar sort of side, similar sort of tactics. And unfortunately, I've been pro bullet all season, by the way. Like I've, when everyone was saying he's not, I've said he's the man to take us forward for the next two or three years. But there's, he's got to learn and adapt as he's going. And I don't feel like, particularly in the last month, I've seen some sort of warning signs that he isn't adapting and he isn't learning. And that's a worry for me. And maybe that's partially because the reason he's not got the young players in the, on the bench is because he's not going to be here next year. So he doesn't care about building a partnership between Syopis and Turnbull as the midfield or having Joel Colwell and Keen Ashford give him 20 minutes here and there for a couple of games now so he can start, they can start the last home game of the season. Or he doesn't care because he's not going to be here. So he's going to keep playing Bowler, who's not here next season. Robinson's not probably not going to be here next season. Sawyer's on the bench today. He's not going to be here next season. Hmm. And... It makes no sense to me. But anyway, sorry, I went on a bit of a rant. Now. No, that's all right. Yeah, it's not, not like you to go on a rant. Um, mm. So, uh, Dave, the lone gunman, Sugarman, what's your thoughts on things? 
Well, I, I didn't see the game today, but all, all the reports were, were, were positive in terms of the fact that it was apparently a much, much better um, rounded performance in terms of effort, in terms of um, the actual um, structure of the side and the way they played. But, I mean, if you, if you just t- take the last four games as a sort of uh, an, an example of the season, um, really good first 20 minutes or so against Ipswich. The rest of the game, Ipswich were marginally the better side, but you, you know, at the end of that game, we would have all come away and said, well, that was definitely an improvement on what we've seen recently. And then we managed to nick it in, you know, the last 10 minutes, which was, which was remarkable. Then they go away to Swansea and, and, and were just plain pathetic from first whistle to last. Um, then you expect some sort of a, a reaction at home to uh, Sunderland, and they were actually worse. And then today they go away to Coventry, and you know, albeit fortunate to 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 get two own goals, maybe. But overall, the reports suggest that it was reasonable. Under this guy, I've got no clue where where this club is going at all, where the team is, what the setup is, what the plan is long term, what the plan is short term. What his tactics are supposed to be, what his favourite setup is, I, I've just got no clue. I, I, I just, uh, I can't have him at all. It's as simple as that. Um, I, I'm just, uh, you know, t- today's a, a, an example, an end of season game that actually means nothing um, in the grand scheme of things. The youngest player on the pitch, I think, the youngest player on the city was, was is going to be 25 in the summer. Uh, so where does where does that take you next season in terms of preparation for next season um but i don't know you, you know today today's a victory which it, which has got to be a positive but i just don't know where we go with it with, with this current current setup at all I, i've got no faith in him at all to be honest fair enough just wanted to ask you dave before i go back to steve um uh I, when i saw the starting lineup I, I actually exchanged messages with steve earlier today you know i saw the starting lineup oh my has he really gone with that again? Is he really gone with that inverted wingers thing again? Is he really gone with Mate up front? You know, I mean, Mate probably an okay championship footballer, but he's can't can't be a striker. I mean, he's got one goal all season. Um, you know, um, so so it, I, I thought yeah, I said to uh, Steve, it's like um, Errol's determined to go down with the ship. You know, figuratively, this is the way I play. This is how it is. This is this is yeah. how we go. You know, he, he doesn't seem. He doesn't seem open, does he, to 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 being more proactive about things and trying different things. Just doesn't seem to be him, does it? Not really. Um, but um, you know, the other thing is he changes the side almost every game yeah. um, in terms of uh, three or four players, and, and you could justify it after that Sunderland day barkle and after the Swansea game before it. But have you know since more substitutes became a thing? Have you ever known a manager at any club, let alone ours, make so many substitutes at half time? I mean, today today was one where it didn't happen for a change, but usually there's there's one change, two changes, even three changes at half time, which indicates that he didn't get the starting lineup right in the first place. But I, I mean, I just can't I can't see any sort of progression uh, in this. It's they're eleventh in the table, which is, which is quite astonishing. You know, they say that the table never lies. Um, I, t- I tell you what, in, in my sort of however many years it is now, God knows, 40, 50 years or whatever it is, coming up for fifty years, I think, I've never seen a city side that that, that is sort of um, in more of a false position. Because if this is the eleventh best side in the championship, we might as well pack up and go home now. <laughs> Because uh, you know, I don't believe I don't believe this is a top half side as things stand. Um, but nevertheless, they just keep getting these these weird and wonderful, ugly. Well, this kind of city, you know. You know. But I, I think that there's one telling stat. I put it on the message board a couple of weeks ago. But I think this is this is interesting, and, and this is an indication of where we are. Really, um, we're currently on a run of 26 league games without a victory by two or more goals. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, um, the side's last win by a two-goal margin was back in October when they beat Bristol City 2-0. Uh, currently, there are only two teams in the top five divisions, so 
down as far as the National League, who were on longer runs than us uh, of uh, not winning by two goals or more. And that's Birmingham, who were on a run of 29, and Rotherham, who were on a run of 28. Mm. Every other club in every other division has, has, has won by uh, two or more goals. Sutton United were on a similar run until recently, and they've won by two clear goals, and, th and I think they won 3 0 today recently. Carlisle well, were bottom of the yeah. uh, League One, uh, were, and they won 3 1 in midweek. Okay. Um, and, and during that period, City have been beaten by two clear goals on 10 separate occasions, um, or two, two or more. So, it, to me, this is just not, not sustainable, the way things are going forward. And it, it just seems like treading water, completely treading water, not trying anything uh, progressive, not trying anything that's going to actually um, work out long term. It's just like, scrape a result here, scrape a result there, and... Uh, okay, so you're yeah. you're good with those stats, so Dave. I like I like, it. I like your stats. Um, it's it's something though, isn't it, Steve? When we're, we're being outdone by Sutton, you know, Sutton United have put one over on us. You know, things things aren't, aren't great. Um, jo the Josh but the Josh Bowler moments today, right? Because there's a comment here from uh, uh, G D Parry, um, so which is a great 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 uh, great name. Uh, thanks, thanks for that. Anyway, um, poor old Bowler plays his best in months, and then they credit both to Kitching. You know, so uh, I, I, did, I haven't seen either goal, Steve. I didn't see any of the action. I couldn't get to it at all today, right? Um, yeah. So tell me about those goals. I'm guessing he obviously cut in from the right, turned turned onto his left, and uh, were, they, were, they, were they great great strikes at goal? Or was it was it was very no? The, the, the first goal was um, was a corner, Steve. Um, nice nice corner from Turnbull, and that's one thing I will say about him. He's he's um, he's very good at dead balls. Uh, I think it was Phillips that knocked the ball down. There's a bit of a scramble in the box. His bowler was about three yards out. Um, Kitchen was pulling the hell out of his shirt, and uh, he just took a swipe at it and put the ball in the roof of the net. So that was the first one. And then the second one, uh, nice move, uh, nice bit of passing through the midfield. Bowler gets the ball right-hand side. Um, takes the full back on on his right side which is a, a rarity normally he's coming inside um and he tried tried to wang across him with his right foot and uh, it, it hit kitchen's head and it flew in the top corner again he was so surprised so <laughs> he never thought he'd see him using his right foot yeah i know yeah it's a rarity isn't it i was amazed because I didn't know he had you know, and that's been that's that's been my one of my big beefs with bullet he, he keeps playing yeah. you know a left-footed player on the right hand side of this this inverted winger business but he did yeah. have a good game today bowler actually um he looked he looked at as simon bowler. said he, he actually looked lively today I, as a player i always liked bowler when he was with blackpool i think i mentioned before when i've been on i i think he's a good player but i, I don't think uh, this business of playing inverted wingers i i don't get it and he's i think you know to pick up what dave said bullets a very stubborn man and um I, I don't think he's he's learned either. Personally, I don't think he's the man to take us forward either. Um, uh, he, even though we're, we're like like Dave just said there, we're grinding out these silly results. You know, another one that springs to mind was Sunderland away. How the hell did we win that game? You know, and there's another one there today. We're okay. We played better today, and I I will you know tip my hat there. But I mean, the abject performances. We I mean, the Sunderland game was. One of the worst games of football. I've been going down there about 55 years now. And that mm. was one of the worst games of football. And, and people always bring up more when we were in the fourth division and third division. That was one of the worst games of football I've ever seen. There was just nothing. And we're, and, and this this idea about playing out from the back, um, you know, we saw against Sunderland. We were giving the ball away. I mean, <laughs> and then we don't press, and it, it, it's, it's a recipe, as Simon said, for disaster. I think if you're going to play out from the back, then you've certainly got to press from your front players. And, and from what I saw again today, even though we won that game, Bullets content just to let any side come into our half, 10 yards, and just let them play. And as Simon said earlier, if you do that to the top, top sides, they'll tear you to pieces. So it's, it's a big worry, and I... Personally, I, I, I don't think Errol's the right man to take us forward. I, mm. I worry, you know, 
why are we worrying about more about points than blooding our youngsters? People like Joel Colwell and Ashford should be in that team today. I mean, we're not going to go down. We're not going to go up. So let's 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 have a look at them. Let's see what they. I mean, they've been on the bench a couple of times as a token gesture, but they never get game time. You know, and as as the boys have said, a lot of those lone players are going back the end of the season. We're back to square one because the youngsters haven't had game time, which is crazy. Yeah. So, so, um, Sai, si, coming back to you, um, you, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? The arrow bullet one, it's, it's an interesting one. It, it kind of spins around, you know, we're still, I mean, here's my, my, my gut feeling is I'm probably totally wrong as, as usual. My, my, my gut feeling is he's, he's, he's already a goner, I think, because I think by now it probably would have been some sort of announcement. And, uh, Steve's point there about, you know, with well, 16 points clear of the drop, I think it means. Uh, Huddersfield will win the last six games. Drink can happen, so we're pretty well. We're already secure. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I just think you know in now a case is a little, little bit like the 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 girlfriend scenario, which I remember from when I was a kid years and years and years ago. You know, um, that, vaguely that you know you you probably at that time you wouldn't sort of you know get rid of your <laughs> girlfriend unless you had another one lined up sort of thing. So <laughs> it's a bit of that. But um, well, how, how are your thoughts on the Errol? Uh, apologies to anyone who's ever known me in my life, by the way. Uh, so, so in terms of um, your thoughts towards Errol Bullet, uh, how how are they now? Because you say you've been quite supportive up to yeah. this point. So there's two sides to it with Bullet. Um, I think there's one side where you basically you've got to say, has he got enough credit in the bank from the first half of the season where you can mm -hmm. say, right, he's done enough with sort of fit players and a fit squad and, you know, everyone's fresh, that you've seen enough positives in that first half of the season that if you can give him a few players, more importantly, get a few players out because there is, in my opinion, and I will say in my opinion so people don't get upset, there's a couple of bad eggs in that squad which are causing issues within the morale and, the, and the, they're either not on board with the manager or they're not... On your opinion side, because you mentioned that the other night in your stream. Um, how can I word this? So, as reported in the various newspapers in the first half of the season, uh, uh, Robinson has fallen out with the manager a number of times. Hmm. Uh, he's in, for It's my understanding that he's not the only one. Um, and look, that happens. Uh, especially at football clubs, but it happens at all workplaces. If people and you know, they can be a bit of back and forth conversation, and and that's not necessarily a bad thing. It becomes a bad thing if the person who's not playing, for instance, is kind of moaning to his mate in the squad, and then it can spread really, really quickly. We talk about it a lot on the Rodri Gig show, like one sort of, and they might not even do it intentionally. It can just be they're complaining about the manager or the tactics or the, you know, not playing. And then it can very quickly spread. And it, once you lose that dressing room, that's an issue. But anyway, I think regardless, there is players within that squad which need to be moved on, either because they're not good enough, they don't fit into the way the club or the manager want to play going forward. There's a few players which need to be moved on. And I think that is just as important as getting the right players in. Um, I also think it would be fair to say that he didn't get the players that he wanted in January and he kind of, I would say at least a couple of them were given to him rather than him, you know, like being third or fourth on his list of players. I think there was at least a couple which were probably selected by the club at the last minute so that he had someone. Well, I, I mean, the, just... the most obvious one for that, surely, you know, although I think he is a really good player, the better players around him is, is Turnbull, you know. Because he yes. came out of nowhere at the, at the last moment and he, you know, he isn't a striker. Well, I think the thing with Turnbull, which is incredibly frustrating for me, is um, he's a very good footballer. Um, he's very good technically on the ball. And when I heard that we'd signed Turnbull, mm. I was so excited because I yeah, thought, almost. right, we're going to see Turnbull and Cyrus and then we're going to have Colwell or Ramsey in the ten. And that is going to be a really good midfield because Syopis and Turnbull, they complement each other. But it took, there was a point where I felt like Syopis was trying to do two roles almost. He was trying to be the holding midfielder, but he was also trying to progress the ball up the field and be the passer, which he's not probably got the the skill set to do. Where Because Joe Rawls was out and Ryan Wintle is Ryan Wintle. He's got some good capabilities, but he hasn't 
necessarily got the capabilities to do other things. Um, and I, and then we haven't seen Turnbull once play alongside Cyopus, which has been a personal bug. But, but back on the bullet thing. So there's that one side of it where you say, right, does he got enough in the bank? Were the performances good enough when they were good? And do you think if he can build, if you can give him his his type of squad, will he be able to take the club forward over two or three series and actually two, two or three seasons and actually build? Or have there been enough red flags in the bad parts that you think, right, okay, maybe he's not the guy. You know, I understand people's frustration with the possession football. Possession football can be really, really effective, especially in the championship where pretty much every team presses but you've got to have the players capable of doing it and i think yeah. you know mcginnis is capable of it phillips is capable of it i would question whether gutas is capable of kind of playing once two two strikers are sort of pressing him but you know there's also nothing wrong with being a bit more direct when you're under pressure and going over the press it doesn't have to be just a long ball hunt you know lumped to anywhere it's is having a plan B and, and being able to adapt. For me personally, I've gone from, yes, I think he's the right man. If you give him time and you be patient, I'm more around the 50-50 place now. And the one thing, as I said earlier, one thing which has really kind of pushed me in that direction is I don't think he's learning. Steve said it earlier. I think he's very stubborn. Mm. And I think there was a, I think a title of one of my reviews, probably a, just after Christmas, I think it was, was something along the lines of Ryan Wintle and who else was it? I think it was a Tete and Wintle will end up costing him his job because he refuses to drop them no matter how badly they play. And I know Wintle didn't start today, but I mean, it, it there's certain players and Bowler as well. Like there's certain players which he seems to pick no matter mm. what and no matter how bad their performances are. But then Ruben Corwell is off at the first opportunity when he's starting to get a bit of quality, yeah. you know, there's been periods where he's had three or four good games and then he's rotated. And you're thinking, huh. like, well, well, I didn't know what you're doing. Like, but um, it's a long answer to your question, is mate. Uh, I'm less pro bullet than I was before. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm quite, you know, he's not the right man. I'm not as confident as Steve to say he's mm. not the right man going well, forward. But I'm, I'm pretty sure Dave's got slightly more the other side of the fence on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your take, Dave? Yeah, uh, I said I, I've seen I've seen nothing uh, from him. Uh, you know, even in the early stages when they were um, they played some decent football in a couple of the away games in particular, because a couple of those home early perfor- home performances were poor. Let's not forget that seems to get brushed mm. over. Oh, you know, that, home form's um, been rubbish all season, haven't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they were really poor against QPR. They were very, very fortunate to get a victory against Sheffield Wednesday, um, you know, for, thanks to um, Will Volks having one of his customary head fits. Yeah. And um, yeah. uh, the, the, the fact is that, that, that a large percentage of the home games are... Th- but from my, my perspective, when you've got a team that, that, that is mid-table in the championship, which I believed at the start of the season this would be a mid-table side... I didn't think it was going to be a, um, a side that was going to um, challenge for the playoffs at all at any stage. So, you know, um, but I, I always thought it was be, be mid, mid-table. But what you wanted to see, or what I wanted to see, was uh, some entertaining football and some signs of progression that, that you can build up, upon yeah. next season going forward uh, in terms of the way he, the manager wants to set up the, the sort of uh, philosophy the manager has, what, whatever, and I, I'm just not, 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 okay. not sure that Bullet's philosophy is anything other than trying to stop the opposition. So, um, so, so seeing what's on the screen there, Dave, if you can see from Andrew Wickham, it's hard to trust Tan and the board. They need to back the manager to progress. Um, you know, and leads us into a, a kind of a wider, a wider conversation, but. You know, is is that is that a fair point that you know it's then down to you, you know, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, to, to make it happen? You know, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm in a really um, this is going to sound stupid to a lot of people I know, but I I I've, I've genuinely um, don't believe that there are many other managers of a similar standing um, that would have got the team uh, into eleventh position in the table. But I think it's happened more by luck than judgment. I really do. And I, and I just don't see 
Um, I would have been equally, well, well, I would have been far, far happier, let's put it that way, uh, if the team was 14th or 15th, but playing good football and winning the occasional game 2 or 3-0 and looking like there was some attacking intent. Hmm. Th- these players that we've got, you know, the, the, the likes of Grant, the likes of Mete, the likes of um, Bowler, they've all scored goals at this level. They've, they've scored, you know, they, they've all been a part of attacking sides that have scored plenty of goals. Mm. It just doesn't happen with this fella. Um, it, it's just, uh, it, it's just oh. so negative and it's so, um, it's so, so sterile, the football. And I just, I just can't see that next season, uh, if he was given license to bring in five or six new players, I just can't see it being any different. Okay. And I, I mean, that, that was the thing today when I saw the starting lineup, uh, just responding to Dave as I go across to Steve, um, when I saw the starting lineup, you know, I, I mean, maybe other clubs do it. Maybe, maybe it works. Maybe you could argue it worked today. You know, playing the inverted wingers, we 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 won the match because we caused the problems. Maybe it worked. But I, when I saw the starting front three, um, I would I would have had I would have had Odada starting down the left. Yeah. Uh, Jeju for some reason wasn't in the squad. I'm guessing it was an injury, but if he was fit, I probably would have put him in there. And I would play Grant down the right, and then you got a left footer and a right footer. Yeah. You know, getting the ball into the box and and, and causing causing uh, problems, um, you know, because I just think who's going to score the goals? And then, as I said earlier, I couldn't see the game today, and I could barely hear it for, for one reason or another. But every time I did, we scored, and it was every time oh my god, I can't believe we scored and had their own goal. You know, uh, relying on them, you know, but he was nearly on a hat trick. You know, the the lad, wasn't he? We made some good chances today, Steve. I just want just quick. One word that Dave used there, and, and it's a word that I've used quite frequently, is entertainment or entertain. And, you know, I, I was up with Wayne in the box on um, on Friday, and the number of people that walked out of the ground when Sunderland went 2-0 up in the Canton end was unreal. And a lot of my friends, are talking to them after the game, they left on 60 minutes. I think... I think if Mr. Bullet is in charge next year and he ca- he carries on with those tactics, you know, a lot of my friends are, 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 are seasons. You know, they, they've been down season ticket holders there for years. They're they're wobbling about renewing their season tickets already, and they're people who've been going 30, 40 years as a season ticket holder. That's the worry um, from a financial aspect because I think. Ultimately, football these days is a lot of money. We're not paying three or four quid to stand on the bob bank anymore. It's costing a lot of money. People travel, that costs money. When you get to the ground, that costs money. So if we haven't got the volume of people in the ground, if spectators start voting with their feet, which I think they have done already, a lot of people around us don't even don't even come to the game anymore and they're season mm-hmm. ticket holders because yeah. they're bored stiff with the with the with the fair. It's um it's an entertainment business football, and I think is that there's a duty of, of a manager certainly to set this team up tactically to entertain, and I'm not seeing that at home. Like Dave said, it's yeah. it's been incredibly poor. I think well, look, Bullets Steve, more worried about not losing. What? I was going to say sorry. Just, uh, yeah, just to say, just just because of Mr. Blue Page, you put the the comment on there. I wondered if you wanted to respond to that. Yeah, and and listen, I get that. Um, yes, he, he had a remit probably to keep um to keep the team you know afloat, and he's done that. As Dave just said there, is it by more luck than judgment? The points are on the board, but I, I, I'm not convinced in the manner that we've got those victories. Um, and again today, OK, we played better today, yes, but the goals went, off, went in off someone's backside and the, and the defender put the ball in his own net. Carl and Grant should have scored, yes. Uh, and we, we looked we looked a lot better. But I, I still don't like the way he sets the team up. Again, we had two defensive midfielders in there, OK, played Turnbull a bit further forward again, as he did against Swansea. But he, he, he's, he seems to be, uh, it, it reminds me, and I said this to a few of our lads, it reminds me the old Italian football from the 80s, which I never used to watch on Channel 4 because I found it sterile and boring. And I think that's the sort of style that Bullock's setting his team up with. You know, I mean, I'd love to see what they do in, in training. You know, yep. you know uh, uh, today aside, I mean, as soon as they get close to the halfway line, it seems that fear seems to set in and they don't know what to do with the ball. And I, just to quickly touch on what the book is saying about players falling out with the management, do we all think, or I personally do, that it's, it's down to the tactics? Because if you've got if you've got progressive players who like to play on the front foot, like your Robinsons, like your Carl Wills, like your um, like Bowler, um, are they being are they being stifled by 
you know, this fear of, you know, you've got to track back and you've got to put a foot in, you know, uh, look, look at someone like Glenn Hoddle, Steve, he, he was the one, I mean, Spurs didn't even tell him to track back, he, he was there just to spray the balls round, and I think Cole especially has been given a very raw deal. Yeah, I mean, again, um, Sai, uh, I'll, I'll let you respond to the comment on the screen as well because it's kind of a relevant one because, it, you know, it, it basically, if that was the objective at the start of the season, then he's a su successful manager. But uh, Cole, well, again, the other one wasn't in the squad today. And again, I'm guessing it was an injury. But what about that? You know, Errol Bullet kind of had the agenda, keep us in the league, nice and safe, well away from the drop, you know, mid-table plus. So the one thing I would say, right, is – we haven't played good football for a long time. And this manager clearly plays uh, like a possession-based football before, you know, he, he wants to have the ball a lot. And I understand what everyone's frustration with it. And I understand all the points that the boys have made. I actually agree with probably 90% of them. But I also think it takes time to change what you've what the squad is used to what we've been doing previously it also takes time to get your players in the players who aren't going to be capable for whatever reason of playing the way you want to play it's very difficult to do that in 12 months especially when you've got three or four lone players maybe three or four players who you're probably going to move on for one reason or another so that's it takes time so if you're just gonna and I don't. I just mean generally as a club. If we're just going to shift the managers every twelve months, eighteen months, because they haven't straight away got a reaction or they straight away haven't changed things, I just think it's going to be like a revolving door thing. And and yes, some might work, some won't. One of the interesting things I was looking at um, Bullet's previous record, um, and previously he's quite often favoured like a three-five-two, for instance. But you've got to play with what. You, a lot of managers, and I think he's been guilty of this a lot this year, is as a manager, and it's my belief that you should look at the squad you've got and then come up with tactics that suit those players, not come in and go, this is the way I manage, this is the way I play, this is the way we're going to play, do it. Because you could have 20 players who don't, don't suit those tactics or that system. And I think there's a mix at the moment of players that suit like a possession-based game, but there's also other players who are a bit more direct or a bit more creative who maybe suit like a more counter-attacking game or, or the, you know, different styles. I actually think that a 3-5-2 is probably suited to a lot of the players that we've currently got in our squad, like a Wilson S. Brand and an Odauda and people like this. Like, they're probably more suited to, 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 to a 3-5-2, and I think you could still be defensively solid, but maybe create a bit... The biggest problem is we haven't got a striker. We still don't have a, a goal scorer. We haven't got a striker at the club, which, nope. which makes you wonder why is Keen Ashford hmm. not in the squad again? Well, we um, didn't have a striker on the bench today, did we? Because JG was no. missing and the Tete's out. We just did literally did not have a striker, unless you say Robinson is the, uh, is the striker. We didn't so have one on the where's bench. Where's the Tete gone, Steve? Where's he gone? He's injured. He is. He's injured at the moment, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Just to bring 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 you in uh, on that one. Somebody just made a good comment, actually. Well, obviously, that, you know, Paul Williams very lucky win. Our forwards were awful, uh, but the result keeps uh, Bullet in the job. I mean, the, the thing is, we won. You know, we have to remember we did win a match. We went away with Coventry <laughs> just outside the playoffs. We won. You know, so the, th the thing is, from from um, the, the the perspective of building with a manager uh, uh, and all that. I, I, not not maybe the last time I was on the show at the start of the season. I said, look, what, whatever happens, you've got to give this guy a, a year minimum. But in my view, at that time, it was two years. Um, you've got to give him a chance to build a squad and, and and build a you know build a team going forward. But I'm going to hold my hands up now and say that I was just wrong on that on that 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 score uh, with this guy because as time has gone on, I've seen nothing. To suggest that there's going to be any progress going forward, nothing at all. The football is just absolutely terrible, and you're not going to get anywhere in this division playing that sort of football week in, week out, uh, and pinching the odd victory here and there through set pieces and what have you. Um, but another thing with Bullet, you, you know, you, you look at his record. Uh, you're talk, talking about bit, uh, building with a manager going forward. Um, his previous clubs, I've, I've got it up on the screen now in front of me. Um, he was at, his first job was at Metalia Spore, where he was there for two years. 
Then he was at Alanya Sport for a year. Then he was at Fanabache for eight months. Then he was at, I can't even pronounce this one, Gazi here for, for, for a year and a half. Do you have another so go there? It, no. So, so it's, it's, it's not as if he's a manager that's ever stuck around anywhere anyway, yeah. previously. Um, yeah. And I just a Turkish uh, journeyman. You, you know, the fact that, the fact that he was um, sent packing by Fenerbahce uh, after eight months while they were third in the table, yeah. Uh, was interesting because they were effectively expected to finish third in the table that season, from what I understand reading about it. Uh, and um, uh, apparently, despite the fact that this was this was a period he was manager of Fenerbahce um, during the period that fans weren't allowed in the grounds, um, but nevertheless the fans were, were, were unhappy with his negative football, and so yeah. he was given the boot after eight months. Um, I, I, as I say, I, I, I honestly wish. The, 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 that I'd, I'd sort of uh, my convictions early in the season that realistically he had to be given a minimum of a year but but but, but realistically two years when I was last on the show I, I wish I could stand by that now and say that that's the way I should but I'm just seeing nothing to suggest yeah. that there's any sort of progress like the end of this guy that's the, that's the problem it but, looks uh, my view is is that if 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 we retain his services Next season will be more of the same, and I'll be bored, senseless, and just stop going. Yeah, so, so, so the thing, the thing is, Dave. Right, there's a couple, couple, couple things to mention. Um, firstly, we've got a great, great one from Ian Stewart, who's uh, who I was chips him the nice Y O Y. So I'll go to Steve with a Y O Y in a second. But um, <laughs> you know, if 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 we're bored as hell watching it, and it's like watching paint dry. You, I think it's relevant, Dave. Just briefly, I think it's relevant to put that into the kind of the, the mindset of the players. Who you know, they don't they don't play football. You know, I mean, the professional footballers they get well paid for it, but you'd like to think they're playing football because their career is fairly short and they want to enjoy that 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 mm -hmm. career. I wonder how they feel about being asked to be so kind of um, uh, safe. A negative but, but it, but it, it, it's an important, um, you, you know, the entertainment thing that's, that Steve touched on earlier. It's an important factor. If you're going to be a mid-table championship side, which we are at the moment, and we're likely to be for a couple more years, I would have, I would have thought, unless we get a change of ownership or something dramatic happens, entertainment is going to be important because you're sure. going to want to keep people on side and keep them coming back. Now, where I sit in in the center of the Ninian stand. They're great seats. They're all season ticket holders everywhere around us. There are rows of empty seats at the moment mm -hmm. uh, during games. Uh, we, we we come uh, fr from our local pub in Rubina. We, we come in on a minibus, 16-seater. Um, on uh, uh, fr uh, Friday, there were four spare seats, you know, and you, usually we have no trouble filling them, but we just couldn't couldn't get anybody to go. We had free tickets we couldn't give away. Um, and I mean that, that's going to be the that, that's going to be the situation um, yeah. going forward. If if yeah. if this sort of sterile, tedious, boring football continues. So mm. so coming off the back of that, I go to the YOY for, for, from 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 Ian, Ian Stewart. Uh, this is for you, Stevia. Why or why have we gotten to six games from the end of the season, but not one of our players scoring twice in the league game? Yet we had an opposition player score two own goals uh, for <laughs> us today. That must surely say a lot on how poor this season has been. And then he says at the end, own goals for us must, must now be up around five or six, if not more. And I don't know if the sides check this yet, but I'll just say to they you, are the top fans, scorers. I think they are our top scorers. Yeah. yeah. So do you want to respond? <laughs> I am also Sunderland lost five one at home today as well. Yeah. I, I thought, Which is not. There was a great line on the message board earlier. Somebody said, uh, our top scorers are now NG and OG. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, the, the short answer there, Steve, is we, we don't create enough. And the reason for that is because it's due to the manager's tactics. And um, I, I just go quickly go back to the to Sunderland game. Even when we're two down, we're still playing balls across our 18-yard box. Players, are, Our players, like Simon said earlier, some of our players are not comfortable playing out from the back. So you'd think that now and again, I mean, now and again, I watch Spurs. Spurs are experts at knocking the ball around. Even they get caught. Brighton got caught yesterday against Liverpool. Even the top sides are getting caught playing out from the back. So you'd think whoever's decided that's the way to play. Like I've been craving Neil Warnock just to just to put a few long ones in the channel and just chase the ball. 
you know, and just to get the ball in the opposition half to create chances. And the why or why then, to answer the question, is we just don't create enough and we don't look like creating enough from open play. I mean, again, one of the goals came from a corner today. The second goal was a better move playing through the midfield. But uh, most of our goals and opportunities this year have, be, have come from um, corners or, or free kicks, haven't they? And we, uh, that, the reason for that is we're not getting the ball into dangerous, dangerous areas. And when we do, when we get in the opposition half, the players are looking back and sideways all the time, as opposed to getting on the front foot and playing the ball forward. That's the reason why we're not scoring goals. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a really that's a really important point because if you think about the lineup today, I I actually you know maybe I'm I'm not maybe uh, com convincing other people too much with this. I quite like if you're going to have two holding midfielders, I quite like Joe Rawls being one of them because it gives us a left foot, right foot kind of uh, balance. But then if those players are there to be defensive and, and you know, they play it forward to whoever's playing the number 10, which would be a choice of Colwell, Turnbull, Robinson or Ramsey, actually. Um, you know, and then and then where, where's that ball going to go then? Because if you're going to check it up to an inverted winner, uh, winger, you know, it, like, it, it, it kind of, it's counterintuitive, isn't it? It's, it's like we said before, Steve, we're crying out for, for the older viewers. We're crying out for Willie Anderson, Barry Jones or John Farrington on the right to get on the outside of okay. their fullbacks, cross the ball over for a centre forward. I'm there and I had the ball in. That's that's the game. That, that I mean, the name of the game, even the Premier teams, is getting to the byline, getting behind defences. And sometimes our midfield players don't even push on um, in front of our attack. And that's why we don't create chances. You've got to... You've got to <laughs> you, you've got to give players like Colwell a bit of a license to do that and, and take the fear out of coming back and putting the foot in. Let him stay as a 10 and try and spread the balls around, get behind the defences like he did against you know, the, the game against Ipswich, him and Carl and Grant on the right-hand side. You've got to give players a license to do we that. So and the manager... Better. We look no, so much the manager better. the coaches. Yeah. yeah, of course he was. Yeah, and it, like you like you said earlier, you, Carl and Grant, he, he he stubbornly played him on the left hand side right throughout the season. The boy's a right footed player, so why not just try him over there? Even when we have Berkey and Noon playing with Jones, I mean, at least they switched throughout the game. They'd switch the wingers round to give it a bit of variety. We don't do that. So as a as an op opposition manager, you sort of know what kind of city you're gonna how they're gonna set up and how they're gonna play, don't you? Yeah, and a, a comment there from uh, St Steve Thomas. Um, uh, si uh, from Steve uh, Steve Thomas. He, he just back from Coventry. He lives. He lives in N N Nottingham, I think. Sorry to have missed the first part of the show. Uh, deserve to win today. Chalk and cheese from Saturday, and if Errol can motivate him like today, let's back him. So there's someone <laughs> someone else pro pro uh, pro bullet for you, Sai. I look at the end of the day for me. It's the players have got to take some. Um, responsibility for motivating yourself like the, the players the coaching staff the managers the football club as a whole going into that Sunderland game they owed the fans a performance after the absolute disgrace that was the derby and what they did is they put in a worse performance now yes you can say this that and the other about the manager the tactics the team selection but at the end of the day the players are on the pitch have, can put effort in and can run about a bit and put a tackle in like, I'm pretty sure the manager's not telling them to stand around and do their hair and watch as runners go past them or whatever else. Like, they shouldn't need to be motivated by the manager, is my point, I guess. Like, you should be able to get yourself up for a game of football for your football club, even if you're a lone player. Um, so I don't necessarily, like, agree that that's the... Like, of course, the manager should get them up for it and tactically they should be prepared and all that sort of stuff but like effort and motivation should just come from the individual for me so, um go on Steve. sorry so i just want to go around on this because we've gone into the last sort of 10 minutes so i'll start with you right so i think we're going into our 125th season which is quite, quite an important season i think the season ticket holders i think the season tickets are going on sale towards the end of this week from right something like that you know it's a special season. We're talking about which kit we, I'm sure we'd all know which kit we'd like, you know, just drive down the side probably is the one we'd all probably like to see. But um, how, how how can, you know, how would you feel, you know, how, how, how would you, how do you think uh, season ticket holders will feel actually about being asked to shell out for the under 25th season of, of Cardiff City um, thinking we don't even know who the manager's going to be. 
Uh, we're not mm. playing great football. It's a pretty miserable watch. Um, mm, not quite sure. I, I think there's a big chunk of season ticket holders who are already frustrated. And I think it's not just the manager and the tactics. I think there's a big chunk of the fan base which have feel like the board as a whole have dropped the ball on several issues over the last few years, at least being kind. And I think there's that frustration is already there. Like as an undercurrent, there's a frustration with the board. And I think that combined with the tactics and the, and the kind of the style of football, some of the performances in the derbies and things like this, it's like there is a, there, there's just negativity in the background all the time. And then when you put in a couple of performances like the Swansea Sunderland game, it all comes to the to a head. And then if you ask people, like you start sending out season ticket things around the same time as when that negativity is about, it's undoubtedly going to be difficult to do. Which is why they should be doing what I said the other uh, at the start of the show, Steve. Is they should be starting Tanner on the right for the next six games. They should be playing Colwell, Joel Colwell, and Ashford for fifteen minutes at the end of the next three or four games and probably starting them in the last two home games because the results don't really matter now. So give yeah. the fans something to be excited about. Like, yeah. and like I could tell you, Joel Colwell is so highly rated, not just by the people at Cardiff, but by the, the under 23 or the Academy system, whatever you want to call it as a whole in the championship. He's one of the most highly rated players in the system. So let's, See if he's ready now. So if we give him a few, you know, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there, and then start at the end of a year, at least we know, well, actually, he might need a loan, say. So maybe he needs to go on loan next year for six months. Yeah, so I, think, I think I probably would do in the world of good, actually. But um, we won't know, will we? Because we can't play him in the championship when it's a must win. Yeah. No. Um, Dave, what, <clears> so we've got half, half a dozen games to go coming off the back of what uh, Simon said then about, you know, trying to excite fans and giving them something to feel part of and be passionate about it. It's a big decision making a season ticket uh, purchase, isn't it? You know, we're in a financial crisis and everything else. But it's also something to be interested in <laughs> as well. Yeah. As yeah. 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 You're just, just actually interested, you, you know, yeah. um, uh, and as it stands, it's, it, the home games are just the same old, same old. You, you're just looking at degrees of grim performances rather than anything else. Um, the situation is, I, th I think the clubs, you know, the season tickets have gone up this season. Not by a huge amount, but there is a raise. It's about 10% across the board, I think. Um, but they're still reasonably priced if you look at the, the cost of pretty much everything else in life these days. Um, so so the club's doing it right uh, on that term front. But the situation is that the, I, I'm just judging it from my own experience within the ground. There are so many empty seats around us on a regular basis now. Yeah. And, and the family stand looks deserted most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, we're, we're, we're getting to the stage where we can't even give tickets away in the pub uh, for some of these games. So mm -hmm. um, it, 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 something desperately needs to change because I think there's going to be a drop in season tickets this season, mm -hmm. whatever happens. It, it, it's just a case of how significant that drop is. Uh, and I think they've, they, they've got a few games to try and rescue uh, a bit more interest from the floating fans at the moment. And bear in yeah, mind, when yeah. I say floating fans, that includes a lot of season ticket holders. Yeah, you know, it does. It does. Buy season ticket holder uh, season tickets because they're reasonably priced, but we'll we'll um, we'll cherry pick the games they go to. Well, the Sunderland game is um, a good example, Steve. It? It's, you know, it was just a horrible day altogether. The whole thing was miserable, wasn't it? It's, it's, it's a bit of a worry as well with, with the kids, Steve, because, you know, they're, they're the future of, of Cardiff City. And you imagine, I've I got two boys and I, I've tried, but I, I can just imagine my, my two boys sat there. They they, they, they want to go. They, 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 they want to be excited. They want goal. The kids want goals. The kids want something to get out their seats and sing along to. And they're, they're, it's not being served. The entertainment is not there. So that, that's a big worry. And, um, you know, I mean, if, if you're looking at it from a... As a fan, we need to know really who's going to be in charge as a, uh, as a manager next next season because if they make the decision and Bullock's going to be in charge, I think you will see quite a drastic tail off in sales. I think you'll see that um, if a new if a new manager comes in. And just on the question of Bullock, if they keep Bullock, is he? Can we honestly say that you know Tan's going to give Bullock the money that he wants to bring in his own men? I I can't see it. 
Yeah, I mean, you know what, Chan's like with cash. Uh, are we going to just have another, you know, a clear out of the current loan needs, another loan coming in? And, you know, uh, people keep saying, oh, you've got to give Bullet another season so he can bring his own men in. He's got to be given the money to do that, the finance. And uh, can we honestly see Vincent doing that? I don't think so. You know, so it, it's, it's a, but as a fan, like I said, we need to know. Uh, before we renew, who's going to be at the helm next year? Well, what sort of football are we going to see next year? Are we going to see homegrown young players in the team? Because we all know, Steve, if we've got our own on the pitch, we're going to give them a little bit of leeway. But I tell you what, they'll put the effort in when we're playing in a derby because they're homegrown. So give them a give them a turn, give them a chance, like Simon said. That's what we want to see. We want to see the youngsters in. I, th I thought there was a key um, a key indicator of what we're talking about in terms of the entertainment, in terms of uh, how we're going uh, in, on the, in the game on Friday, in that I think that is um, the, the lad who sits in front of me, Pete, just, just turned around and said to me before the first, there is going to be audible booing at halftime, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, there was, and there was, and there was, before that, uh, before yeah. the halftime whistle, and there was at various intervals during the, half, uh, the second yeah. half. Now you're talking about a team that, that has been pretty poor for, for the last couple of um, uh, last couple of seasons, fighting against relegation. But I haven't heard a crowd react in, in a game where, when the, the defeats were racking up uh, as, as they did on Friday. So I think that's an indicator that they really need to uh, to think about in the next few games, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, we we'll, we better whiz around a bit on the on the on the hull match. Um, cool. Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's lots of comments coming in from people saying how they're going to be, you know, uh, renewing Renew the it. And, and also, you know, uh, uh, whether we're being over negative on the day, and we we actually won. So you know, I mean, that's, that's a fair enough. Uh, oh, great word from Nigel Harris, uh, which I'll go, uh, Dave, just for your benefit, you'll like this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> the way they go, he's got a chance. So. I, I won't yeah. bother putting that to the panel. Um, so, uh, uh, Steve, looking ahead to, to the whole game, Hull, I suppose, are like the Coventry kind of level, you know, they've been around the playoffs, there, there are thereabouts. Yeah. Um, you know, more on it for them than us. How do you what 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 do you think? What kind of performance can you predict? It's almost un totally unpredictable with Garden City, and um, you know, is it again a chance now? Sixteen points clear, six games to go. Is it now a good time to do what you said earlier? Put a couple of youngsters on the bench. Yes, it is, Steve, and it, it, it's all down to the manager and what the starting eleven. Like Dave said earlier, you know, yanking players off at half time indicates that he's hands up i picked the wrong team uh so pick the right team Let, let's get on the front foot and get in their faces hull city are a good team they got a really good young manager and i wouldn't be surprised if they beat us but um it all depends on the the card of city that turn up if if we get on the front foot play like we did the last 10 15 minutes against ipswich we can beat them but will the manager set the team up to just grind out a a, a one nil or a nil nil that's the dilemma Okay, and Reese, Reese David Evans. Um, yeah, I, I get that, Reese. What you're saying. Um, first time viewing tonight. Cannot believe how negative and depressing this is. Depressing this has been. A win isn't good enough. Eleventh in the league isn't good enough. Everything's bad. Winning is bad. Mid table is bad. It's it's a, it's a bit bigger and kind of wider than that, really. And um, yeah. yeah, it's not. It's not. Maybe it's not as negative as it as it might appear. You know, we love winning. We're all Cardiff City fans. We've won a match. Great. You know, we're going to be end up mid table. We're going to be safe. We're not we're nowhere near relegation. That's all good news. But uh, we, we need we need to kick on. You know, and, and we need we need yeah. to give the fans something to support and get excited about. I think moving forward because Cardiff City's got so much to offer. Is my my, my take on that? Uh, yeah. Sai, looking ahead to the Hull match. Any thoughts on that one? Yeah. So just to finish on a positive, I wanted to say um, I thought uh, Siopis Turnbull. Um, Jamali Collins, Phillips were all pretty pretty much flawless today. You know, maybe bar one or two things. I also think Cyopas is the best uh, defensive midfielder in the league. I just think he needs someone with him who can do a job. Uh, look, at the end of the day, as I mentioned earlier, for the home games particularly, I want to see Cardiff, like the manager, I said this about a month or two ago, the manager can set a tone with the crowd before 
the game even kicks off by the team he names. Because if it's the kind of Wintel and Rules or Wintel in midfield and Boulder on the right and everyone just sort of goes, oh, same thing again. Whereas if he puts Tanner on the right, like let's see if Tanner, if he gets five, six starts now for the rest of the season, so he knows he's going to get at least an hour, let's see if he's he's up to it. Let's see if he can get a bit of form like Colwell got where he got a few games in a row instead of five minutes every three games. Like, let's see if Tanner's up to it. And if he's not, let's loan him out next year and get someone who is up to it. But we won't know until he plays. Hmm. And the same thing I want, you know, I've said before, I want to see Turnbull and um, Syopis together. I want, just want to see us play and attack inside. You know, okay. Dowd, Dowd on the left. And I think we could beat anyone on our day at home, but we haven't had yeah. those days at home this year. Well, Ipswich was was the recent recent ex- exception. Um, so again, I come back to Reese David Evans, and I put it to you, Dave, because I think you'll, you'll probably sum it up quite quite well. You know, we're, we're overrunning slightly. It's a bank holiday. You know, we should all be sitting around eating eggs and everything. But there, there you go. Uh, Reese 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 uh, David Evans. Thanks, Reese. Um, and I put it to you, Dave, because maybe you can explain it from your point of view as a you know long term City fan. If we went out attack, 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 and we lost five nil. Us, us three tonight. Yeah. We'd all be up in arms, saying, "Why we? Why weren't we more defensively solid?" So it's like we've won a game, we're mid-table, we're doing okay. We're not in any danger. Why can't we be more positive about stuff? And yeah, that that kind of point. Well, we can we can be positive if we want to, but all you could ever do on, on any of these any of these shows, any of the message boards, any Facebook, any social media. You can only judge what you see with your own eyes. And, and I'm bored senseless watching this this guy's football. Um, mm. You know, ha- having watched this club for f- 50 years coming up th- this year, uh, I just can't see that this is in any way progressive. And you can't see how this is going to develop over time. You know, when Dave Jones uh, uh, had to cobble together a team when he came in, there was a... Um, uh, you know, the, the, the team had a, uh, a weak underbelly in his first season because he literally had to cobble together a team from scratch, basically. But you could see that there was a plan behind the way the, the type of football he wanted to play and the way it um, uh, the, the way it was panning out. Uh, and sure enough, uh, we, we got entertaining football for a few years, although um, there was always a soft underbelly to the side there. But there was progression. With Malky right. Mackay, his first season was progressive in yeah. terms of uh, you know where it was bu- building it from. Then we've had several seasons uh, of just dire stuff. This guy's come in, and it's act- the football's actually more dire now, from my perspective, um, <laughs> than it's been in the last couple of years. It's absolutely terrible to watch, and I just can't yeah. see. Uh, uh, you know, eleventh in the table is wonderful if you actually get to eleventh in the table playing some reasonable football. If you don't. Then it means nothing at all because eleventh in the table might as well be seventeenth or, or anything else yeah. because it, it, you're not going to progress uh, with this this sort of football. That's my view. Turn into the whole game, by the way. I'm desperately hoping they get a result at Leeds tonight because if they don't, they come here with not having one in six, and that's got disaster written all over it. Yeah, it would yeah, be, yeah. be lovely to 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 follow up on a, a win today and just turn in another kind of Ipswich type performance because against Ipswich, like you said earlier, Dave, just to summarise, really, um, we played well, pretty well all, all match. And if we'd lost that match by the odd goal, fair enough, you know, we'd have taken it on the chin because we just just turned in a really good performance, and there haven't been enough of those certainly at home this season. I'm only here on a bank holiday talking about Cardiff City because <laughs> we all love Cardiff City. You know, we're not mm-hmm. here for any other reason. Um, and uh, ho- hopefully we can build and, and move forward. And it's great that we got security in the championship. Anyway, thank you all very much uh, for uh, spending some time on the show tonight. Um, may you have a fabulous rest of your bank holiday evening, and uh, we'll speak again soon. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Bye-bye. Happy Easter. Yeah. All the best, yeah. guys.